It's David here, and uh, I am at the CEG uh, Dealer Workshop. Thank you so much. We're here with Dennis on the other side. He's fantastic with his Hello. big hair today. Bye. He's a little gassy, so we'll let that slide. But hey, what are you going to do? Uh, this is anyway. an audio test. This no, it's not an audio <laughs> test. This is a blooper for the end. There you go. Yeah, let him know that you're gassy, buddy. A blooper. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, he, he's rarely gassy. You got to hug it out of him. Then he goes, ooh. <laughs> All right. You ready? Am I loud enough? Can you hear me? Is everything going on? Good. Yeah, you, you'd be su you're surprised that I had this much in me, just ready to come out, just ready. Oh, all right. No, uh, never mind. Yeah, I know what you're gonna say, by the way. All right, you're so funny. Hey, uh, hello guys. This is David here. I am at the CUG Dealer Workshop, but today's video is going to be a fairly poignant one. And by that I mean, it's uh, it's going to be impactful uh, to say the least. So. One of the things that uh, people ask me about more often, I would think, than almost anything else, gamblers, that is, when they come to Vegas, there's a few basic questions. One, what should I buy in for? You know, what's the best strategy? You know, tell me the secret sauce, this kind of thing. Here's what I'll tell you first and foremost. When you come to Vegas, you gotta come for the experience. I have a friend of mine who works as a flight attendant on the airplane. They talk about how excited people are. They come with the dream, they come with the hope when they're on the plane, and then the plane back is sort of very somber and depressing, and everybody's licking their wounds. Of course, there's that one guy in the back who hit something big and is screaming about it, and you want to go over there and strangle him and his kids and that kind of thing. Uh, but for the rest of us, it's, uh, it's a pretty somber thing. We come to Vegas, we have these high hopes and expectations, especially for gamblers. We're not coming for the food per se, which the food's fantastic now. Uh, and uh, Vegas, for whatever reason, doesn't meet our expectations because we came with unrealistic expectations. Not to say I don't want you to come with the dream and the hope. We absolutely do. Vegas is about you know miracles and magic and all those things. But ultimately, we want you to temper your expectations and come just to be entertained. Come to have a good time. Come to enjoy the space. And for that, I'm going to introduce uh, my lock system today. And my lock system is really a system about uh, buying in and managing your bankroll. Okay, uh, so I call it the lock system. It's an acronym and we'll spell it out here in a second. Uh, before I get to that, don't forget if you're looking to learn some craft strategies, craftsy.com and of course Shop Casino Quest or if you'd like to book some time with me or any of our staff and come into Casino Quest at casinoquest.biz and our rates are going up soon, so uh, please, uh, your reservations will stay a little less expensive, but if you just walk in, it's gonna be a little higher because sometimes we can't always take walk-ins and you know there's a higher cost in not being able to manage our staff, so there's that. Okay, straight to it. Here is, here is how the lock system works. So the L is gonna stand for learn. The idea is to learn. It's amazing how many people come to Vegas and don't understand how to play the game how to manage their bankroll, how to, you know, any kind of basic strategy, and they'll just sit down anywhere. And this is where the casinos sort of take advantage of that. This is an opportunity casinos create for themselves because a lot of people sit down at six to five tables, uh, or, you know, they can't split aces the way they want, they don't know basic strategy, or they, it's a triple zero. And this is why these games exist because uh, people don't pay attention, they don't learn, they don't, they don't understand, you know, the odds that are stacked against you. So my recommendation is uh, learn, educate yourself even just a little bit. If, if you're going to play and you're going to spend your money, you don't want to just sort of drop it down, throw it out the window. You want to create as much opportunity as you possibly can. You want to maximize your potential return. If you are going to win, you want that win to be as big as possible. Otherwise, I mean, then, then you're just switching to a different mode. Then it's just about entertainment, making deposit, having fun. Maybe it's close to your room. You're, you're playing in the same hotel. And that's really the goal of the casino is to create the whole experience for you. So you're willing to just, you know, make the deposit. You're not too worried about winning. You know, you're in a whole different mindset. So the next part of lock is the O. And the O is quite simply opportunity. You've heard me talk about creating opportunity a lot. That's my focus. Uh, quite quite simply, that's everything I'm gonna do for you. If you come in and see me, I'm gonna talk about opportunity. I'm gonna try and understand what you're looking to accomplish at a table, and I'm gonna try to meet that expectation with as much opportunity as I can. Some of you are looking to you know, hedge, you want a hedging system, your risk tolerance is low, your, all your risk tolerance is high, you're looking to go on full tilt, but understanding your opportunity will dictate how you're gonna play, You know, how much money you need, where you're gonna go, uh, what your expectations are. Some people, 
their opportunity is really just to grind for time. They're just looking for an experience. They want to belly up to a table, spend $100. They don't care if they win or lose. They see it as a deposit to the casino. And uh, it's money well spent in many cases. Uh, you have a good time. You're able to interact with the dealers. You know, maybe hopefully you get to cheer a little bit and get excited and get that sort of pulse racing, which a lot of us gamblers look for. Uh, the next one is some of you just want to, uh, your opportunity is going on full tilt. You're coming with a maximum bankroll, maximum expectations. You're willing to take maximum risk. And this is quite simply why the casinos are so big. They love you. Thank you very much for coming. You keep a lot of us employed. And there's many casinos where the dealers make a shit ton of money because you guys are willing to make that contribution. And, and thank, you, uh, thank you for that. Uh, and a lot of those people, too, are looking for the secret sauce. Well, I'm here to tell you, David's here to tell you, in all my time being a dealer, the secret sauce is literally on a sandwich. Uh, I haven't seen that played out on a table, but I have tasted some secret sauces every now and then. Uh, not always on a sandwich, but anyways. So the secret sauce, what secret sauce? Uh, if there was a secret sauce, and, and if you're paying for the secret sauce, you've probably paid a little too much for the secret sauce. It's probably just a little mayo and some Thousand Island uh, spread around. Because <clears throat> let me just tell you that, um, yeah, uh, I know a lot of people have some really great stories. We all have great stories. I won a ton of money on a table. A lot of people won a ton of money on a table. But Aquino, I think, has set me back, believe it or not, as much as I've had some great experiences that, and it's just the way it is. Uh, so so let's, uh, let's temper. You know, if you're here, let's talk about, you know, having fun, tempering our expectations, that kind of thing. Okay, next up is um, the next one, which I like, like to talk about in terms of opportunity, is the right system at the right time with the right bankroll. Those, those are the, that's the secret sauce. The right system, at the right time, with the right bankroll. You can't play short money. You can't play a system that's not gonna give you a return on investment and allow you to rapidly take advantage of a hot shooter, a hot shoe, a hot wheel, whatever the case is. So that's the key. Understanding sort of how gambling works and uh, how the money moves through the system, those ebbs and flows. You'll hear a lot of people talk about the math. Well, listen, the math sucks. No one cares about the math. It's, all, it's only about getting lucky and being at that table when someone throws a, an hour-long hand, okay? There's no math to that. Uh, probability for that is low, but it happens all the time. The problem is, is people don't have the right strategy with the right mindset, uh, with the right bankroll in play. Same thing on a shoe. All of a sudden, you're sitting there on a blackjack table, you're playing a $5 flat bet, and you win the next 10 hands in a row without ever pressing. Casino loves you. They absolutely love you. They totally want your business. They give you, and then you wonder why you get a free room. You're like, I didn't play anything. Because they know that you can't, you can't win, that you can't leave the casino a winner. And even if you do, your winning is so marginal, it doesn't matter. You know, ultimately, you spend more than that on the food and the parking and the resort fees and everything else that goes with your experience. You follow? So ultimately, you know, a, a, a blackjack and roulette, it's about having a system in place, a way to press your bet and a way to maximize your returns on the table. Next thing is casino. So the next part of lock, we got learn, opportunity, then it's about the casino. So if you learned anything and you have the right opportunity, now you gotta find the casino that meets that opportunity. If you're just grinding for time, you're looking for entertainment value, go downstairs at whatever casino you're at and put your money in the machines, put your money in the tables, it doesn't matter. You're not looking for a return. You're not looking to create too much opportunity or maximize your return. You're just looking for the experience. And that's great. That's perfectly fine. That's why Vegas exists for, for lots of those people. There are a ton of casinos throughout Vegas who have Terrible odds, terrible returns, but they create an experience. A lot of flashing lights, you know, a genie comes up and kisses your ass and tells you, hey, you're winning here, whatever the case is. And we all get excited. We get a little tingly and that's all we need. That's all we're looking for, a little bit of tingles. You know what I mean? But then the other people who are trying to create opportunity come with the right strategy, the right bankroll. You got to find the right tables. You got to find the right odds. You have to find the right experience. You're looking for dealers that are going to want to deal to you. You're looking for, you know, a floor or, or management that's not going to sweat the money or give you a hard time. You know exactly what I'm talking about, especially those, those gamblers out there know exactly what I'm talking about. So finding the right casino meets this whole sort of lock system. All right, you've learned. You're full of knowledge. You know what your opportunity is, found the right casino, and now you got to know your limits. That's the K, know your limits. And limits is applies to everything. If you're not someone that does well with alcohol, you probably need to stay away from alcohol. 
If you're not someone who does well with an ATM card, you should probably leave the ATM card at home or the credit card or anything else, your wife's purse or whatever, whatever else you have that gives you access to more money. And then you have to have some kind of system in place that tells you it's time to go, whatever that case is. For me, I leave my debit and credit cards at home. I only carry cash that I want to spend to the casino. And then I create a bankroll. I manage my money in the rack or wherever I am that helps me to sort of create the reality. This is the money I'm willing to spend. This is the money that I'm going to use to press. These are my tiers of opportunity. And ultimately, this is the money I'm going to walk with. There's no, the gambler's fallacy that it's the casino's money is, is the wrong mindset. Okay, it's your money. It's your money and manage it like it is your money. The minute it hits the rack, it's your money. If it's money on the table, I don't see it as my money necessarily, unless it's a godforsaken sum of money that I've been able to lay out. But ultimately, the minute it hits the rack and it's an extra $100 in the rack, even if I'm only in five, it's my money. If I decide at that moment to walk and that's, and that's the meter I've laid for myself, then I'm, I'm walking. That's, that's the goal, okay? So that's what we want to do. All right. So there is David's lock system, and I am gonna be evolving this over time because there's many parts of this. There's many parts of the learning, there's many parts of the opportunity, and there's a, a, a ton of casinos out there looking to take your money, and, and we wanna get to the, the deep dive. We wanna understand why they wanna take our money, what the opportunity is there for giving away our money, uh, and you know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's, there's a lots of ways to really investigate and reveal in an honest and true fashion, a la, a la David Casino Quest. And uh, there you go. All right, moving on. So, uh, and then of course, know your limits. So there's the lock system. We're gonna evolve that over time, but let's get to the bankroll quickly because we're running out of SD card space, apparently. We've gotten the lock system out of the place. It only took me about 80 different cuts, just so you know, okay? It wasn't very easy, but I wanted to make it as impactful as I possibly can because ultimately, I want you guys to succeed when you come to Vegas. I want you to come to Casino Quest. I want that to be part of the learning experience whenever possible. I want you to come see me if you want to come see me to work on strategies. But ultimately, I want you to come to Vegas and have fun. I, I don't want you to come here with unrealistic expectations. I've been involved in gaming a very long time. People have been selling the sauce since, as a special sauce since the beginning of time. Everybody wants to take your money. I want you to maximize the fun and the opportunity that you have with your money. And come enjoy the food, come enjoy the shows, come enjoy the tables. And um, let's, get, uh, let's, get, let's get back to business. After the lock, now it's about managing your money in the rack. I get asked this a lot. Now on a dice game, it's pretty easy. You got a lot of room. You can lay out your checks in front of you. On a blackjack table, it's a little different. I got to create multiple piles. Sometimes it makes the bosses nervous. I never understood that, by the way. Uh, but I do manage piles. I have one pile to play, one pile to win, and one pile to take. And it's, it's play, win, take. So just because I have money in my winning pile, all I want to see is where I'm at in the hand, so to speak. The take pile is money that I'm going to squirrel away, and that means I'm going to take to the cage and cash out, maybe pay my rent for that month. Uh, but yeah, that's my take money. Uh, so that's what we're going to get to right here on the craps table. So the first thing you should know is no matter what my bankroll is, I like to buy in for some aces. Typically 10, probably 20. Make it easy on the dealer. Just give me a stack of 20 aces. They might look at you funny, especially if you're on a higher limit table. But I want them not only to keep track of where I'm at, but also to talk to dealers. I will use them. And then, and then when they see that, they go, aha! We love you, you're right? And that starts the experience. The minute you start toking, I like to toke from the very start, at least something, so the dealer's on my side. They're willing to participate. I need a full service dealer. I need a, I need full service, that's what I need. Pretty much anywhere I go, full service is key. But, uh, but yeah, because I, I want the dealer because I'm gonna have a strategy that, that's not gonna be uh, a happy yoke strategy where I'm just throwing down a simple come bet or a pass line bet. I might be making the dealer's life a little bit more difficult. They're gonna have to be, they're gonna be challenged. Like I used to love being challenged, but dealers today, some dealers you're gonna run into are gonna look at you funny with some of these bets, not wanna manage your money. And that's really where it comes down to the casino. That's why we wanna go to the casino where we have dealers that, that aren't necessarily lazy, that wanna engage, that, that like to be challenged, uh, and that kind of thing. Okay, but getting back to the bankroll. So the bankroll is very simple for me. First of all, I have my buy-in. My first 10 checks are my opportunity checks, remember? I talk about buying shooters around the table and I wanna keep track of where I'm at. Because once I start getting low, I might, I might have to change 
uh, how I manage my system, okay? So my system, where I collect, where I'm at the system. So I keep track of how many shooters I have around the table. I might add to that or subtract from that, but I want to give myself a general idea. The reason I do this is because I typically buy in with more than one color. And so as I'm playing, I like it to be very visual so I can look down and see exactly where I'm at without having to go through and count every single check. And these allow me that privilege. I mean, if I get down to like something like this, where I only have four whites left, then I know I, I need to uh, start taking maybe a different direction, a different tack, whatever the case may be. So then the rest of it leading up is my bankroll. So I have my bankroll directly connected to my shooters of my, my opportunities around the table. I use the right side of my bankroll next to my bankroll. This is my prepping action. This is where I'm gonna get ready my best for the next roll. Uh, most of my systems about creating opportunity is all about you know, having the money ready for the dealer, you know, waiting my turn, putting out exactly what I need. And so I wanna get that together and I wanna leave this space directly for that uh, so I can separate it from my bankroll, get it ready, and then hand it directly off to the dealer. Then I have, I have a rear rack. Now ideally, I have the, right, the rack to the right of me, but I might not, there might be someone playing, that's fine. So my rear rack is gonna be, I split it up into three separate sections. The left section is gonna be for my active win. So I'm gonna stack my win here, okay, uh, as I'm going. Now, again, my win isn't necessarily my take. All I'm doing is putting it here uh, because it's showing. So let's say I'm in 500 and I'm winning 100. My 100 will be in back, okay? My original buy-in as close as possible is gonna be in front uh, or my losses as I go down and as I, as I limit the number of shooters, of course. Uh, but my original buy-in, I'll keep my $500, I'll keep pretty tight in front. Behind that is going to be my win, whatever I'm up. If I'm up 100, 200, whatever the case is. The middle area between my win and the middle area is going to be used for my in and out on the roll. So I talk about buying the shooter. So once I'm out, that $100 or whatever it is. So let's say I've invested $100 per shooter. I have a $1,000 bankroll regardless of whatever the system is. I have that hundred, once I make that hundred dollars back, I use this for sort of my in and out for that roll. Once I've collected a hundred here, I put it back in my bankroll or in my wind pile as, as necessary. Okay, you follow? Uh, now, at some point, I'm gonna get to a point where it's, I'm gonna get into my take money. My take money on a thousand dollar bankroll is usually after my first thousand. So I create tiers of opportunity from 1,000 to 2,000, but once I get over 2,000, I start putting aside money. This is the money I'm gonna be taking home with me. So the way I come to a casino is A, I come with a bankroll that I'm willing to lose. I'm making, I'm making my investment in my entertainment. This is something I'm doing besides going to a show. And many, uh, very often, I've saved up money. It's not money I just take out all in one day and budget accordingly. It's money that I've saved up over a couple weeks, maybe a month, whatever the case is. So I come with $1,000, that's my working system, okay? And then before I've come, I know what strategy I'm gonna play. Uh, I know what my, uh, uh, that I'm prepared to lose $1,000, and then I know what my take is. So if I, on my plus 1,000, that plus 1,000 is going home. So if I'm plus 1,000, that money is literally going to leave with me and then I break even at that point, right? Now I'm willing to risk that other 1,000 because I want to be there, I wanna create as much opportunity as possible for myself. And so as I'm moving forward in my bankroll, I will create new tiers of opportunity. So let's say I get to 1,800. Now my investment per shooter could be 180. I can go back to my 10 shooters, now I have 180 per person and I can upgrade my uh, system or I can go to something like a triple lux and maximize my, my presses. And so I don't need to return so quickly. I don't need to use like a double tap system where I'm regressing and getting out so quickly. I can leave my money invested and try to, to take advantage or type more advantage of a hot roll, that type of thing, okay? So again, I got my buy-in, I keep track of my shooters, I have my prep money to the right of in front, in back I have my win, my active, my, my win. In the middle I have my active in and out. I wanna keep track of how much I'm in or out of the roll. So as I'm collecting money, I'll put it here. Let's say I collect only $2, uh, but I'm in 100. I could see that I'm negative $98 for that roll. Now, if I'm still up and it's in my win column, I'll still put it there, but, if it, but I'll return it more often than not, of course, to my working bankroll. And then my take money goes to the right of the rack. This is the money I'm absolutely gonna take home. A lot of casinos won't let you color up mid-roll. They, they want you to wait until you're done. So in that respect, you just have to literally slide it over here. That's my take money. I'm taking that home uh, and then color up when you're done uh, and go. But again, 
Uh, it all comes back to the K, you know, know your limits, know when you want to leave, you know, know what you're willing to spend, you know, all these things. Okay. But there you go. There's a basic rack management on a crap table. I hope you find that useful. I have found it very useful for me to keep track. Uh, I know, uh, Alex's rack management is literally just trying to hold as many checks as possible and pass whatever's left. It's too degen style. Just hold your checks. That way you could care less. You go on full tilt real easy. You can set everything down at any minute. And uh, there you go. That's the other way to do things. Uh, but this is how I manage my rack and I hope you find that useful. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope I didn't fill up too many SD cards and I look forward to seeing you at Casino Quest here in Las Vegas on the fabulous uh, Las Vegas Strip. And uh, take care, stay positive, stay loved, be loved, be well, and I'll see you next time. Bye.